untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today I was taking a look at a Maronar a Rat Tribal deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Maronar, the 5 mana 2 3 legendary rat rogue, saying all rats have fear, meaning they can only be blocked by artifact creatures or black creatures, and we can also tap Maronar and sacrifice a rat to create X 1 1 black rat creature tokens, where X is the number of rats we control, so that can quickly get out of hand. And you may have noticed we're playing 40 copies of a rat colony in the deck. The 2 mana 2 1 gets plus 1 plus 0 for each other rat we control, so also plays well with those rat tokens from Marinar. And a deck can have any number of cards named a rat colony, which is why we can get away with playing 40 copies, could play even more if we wanted to. So our whole game plan is basically play a bunch of rat colonies, eventually play Marinar, hopefully we're not up against an opposing black deck, and then all our rat colonies will be able to attack unblocked and will quickly close out the game. And then the other cards in the deck are mostly here to kind of give us a backup plan, give us a little bit more interaction. At one mana you'll notice a lot of discard spells to make sure we can take away any sweepers or removal spells. So we've got Thoughtseize can take any non-land card at the cost of 2 life, Inquisition can take non-land cards with mana value 3 or less, the rest can take any non-creature non-land card, and then a Dreadfugue can take a card with mana value 2 or less that's not a land, but can also be cast with Cleave, in which case we can take any non-land card. Then we also have Malachi Rebirth, which can be used to maybe save our commander for one mana, otherwise can also be a tap land. Then moving up the curve, besides Rat Colony at 2 mana, we also have Piper of the Swarm, saying rats we control have menace. We can also pay 2 mana and tap it to create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token, and for 4 mana we can tap it, sacrifice 3 rats to gain control of target creature. It's another nice mana sink ability. Then we also have the one copy of Pack Rat, which scales with the number of rats we control, and we can pay two and a black and discard a card to create a token that's a copy of Pack Rat, so maybe in a late game we can start discarding our lands to make additional Pack Rats. Then we also have a little bit of mana acceleration with Arcane Signet and Mindstone. Now we don't often want to play these on turn 2, instead we're better off waiting until turn 3 to play these, and since they can tap for mana right away, we can still potentially play a second rat colony after playing one on turn 2, and then we can potentially play a turn 4 Maronar, so these 2 mana ramp artifacts fit in nicely into our game plan as opposed to 3 mana artifacts, which may help us cast a turn for Maronar, but then won't let us play a rat colony in the same turn. Then we also have Crashing Drawbridge, can tap it to give creatures we control haste until end of turn, so we can maybe activate Maronor right away to generate extra rat tokens. And then we also have Metallic Mimic, which can count as a rat when it enters, and then each other rat we play will enter with an additional plus one plus one counter, it's also very nice with Maronor's ability. Then at three mana we've got Phyrexian Arena, providing a steady stream of card advantage, Bloodline Pretender is a changeling, so also counts as a rat, and will pick up plus one plus one counters whenever a rat enters a battlefield. We've got Bonto's Monument giving our black creatures a one mana discount, and whenever we cast a creature spell, each opponent loses one life until we gain one life. Faceless Agent is another changeling, so counts as a rat, and when it enters, we'll usually find another rat colony to put into our hand. Then Herald Sworn gives our rats a 1 mana discount, and at the beginning of our upkeep we can look at the top card, and if it's a rat we can put it into our hand after revealing it, so another nice source of card advantage. Icon of Ancestry will give our rats plus 1 plus 1, and we can activate it to find a rat in the top 3 cards of our library. And then the Wickerwing Effigy from Alchemy is actually quite synergistic too here, as a 1 of 4 with Defender lets us look at the top card of our library at any time and cast creature spells over the top of our library, and when we cast a creature spell that way, it becomes a black bird in addition to its other colors and types, so it will still be a rat if we play a rat colony. It also has flying and base power and toughness 1-1, one, one, but it will still pick up that plus 1 plus 0 for each other rat we control, so it actually improves our rat colony if we cast it off the top of our deck while providing card advantage. Then at 4 mana, Hagra Mauling is one of the few removal spells in the deck, but it can also be played as a tap land on turn 1 when we're not doing much. And then we've got Crippling Fear as a one-sided sweeper, giving all non-rat creatures minus 3, minus 3 until end of turn. 
Then the Shinobi can be ninjutsued for 4 mana, so if we attack with a creature and it goes unblocked, we can basically put this into play by taking one of those attacking creatures back into our hand, and then when this deals combat damage to a player, that player discards 2 cards. It's also very synergistic with the Fear from Marinar, as we can repeatedly hit the opponent unblocked. Vanquisher's Banner will give our rats plus one plus one, and whenever we cast a rat we get to draw a card. And finally, Haunting Voyage is a nice way to get back a whole bunch of rats from our graveyard if we pay the two mana to exile it, and then seven mana with the foretell cost, otherwise for six mana only gets back two rats from our graveyard. And then the mana base includes 30 snow-covered swamps to go with our one copy of Faceless Haven, which also has all creature types, which counts rat, so it can also have some synergies there. We've got Witch's College to potentially put a creature back. We've got Phyrexian Tower, which can maybe ramp out our Marinar if we sacrifice a creature. Hive of the Eye Tyrant as another creature land. Castle Lothwain to provide card advantage. And Cabal Stronghold could also give us a small mana boost if we've got multiple swamps in play. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Nif Mizzet, Parun. So if they have any sweepers here, we could be in trouble. Could I mulligan to try and find something like a Thoughtseize or Duress? That might be worth it. Alright, at least uh, Icon of Ancestry will help. So I'll try this. And then probably play a tapped Cottage on one. Hang on to Rebirth, but might end up playing it as a land as well. And then we can kick things off with a Metallic Mimic, which will most likely get answered. But that's fine. If they don't kill the Mimic right away, we'll face an interesting decision next turn. Alright, opponent passes. So I could play Rat Colony, keep up Rebirth. That seems like the play. And then Rebirth can save the Mimic. Possible I wanted to attack first for two. But uh, next turn we can reevaluate, maybe play Icon, maybe double rats if we draw land. We do not. So I don't want Icon getting countered. So probably go for a rat colony here. Oh, gets dissipated, that's fine. So as long as they don't have a board wipe, we should be fine. Okay, probably going for another rat colony here over Icon. Played main phase to grow the original rat colony. And gets countered. But we're getting in for 6 per turn, and they're still 2 turns away from niv -Mizzet. Opponent casting Thirst to maybe hit her land drops. And hopefully they don't have another 1 or 2 mana removal spell. Opponent discards Spell Pierce, which maybe opens up the window for Icon. Or I can uh, Ninjutsu the Shinobi here. Which also gets around a counter spell. And then probably pick up the mimic to hit a little bit harder. Radical idea to draw before they'll have to discard two. Points at four. And if they tap out for Niv and we draw land for Marinar, it's game over. As Fear will get us across the finish line. And even if we don't draw the land, we still have some great options available. 
So playing Icon of Ancestry would give us lethal here, but I'm kind of curious to find out what else they have in hand. So instead I'll go with maybe a Metallic Mimic plus another Rat Colony, so we get to resolve that uh, Discard 2 trigger. Their opponent's forced to block, takes 3 down to 1, and a Tails End and a Counterspell discarded, so they were holding plenty of counter magic. Tails End also could have been used to maybe counter the discard trigger last turn, but yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Feather the Redeemed, which could be a tough matchup if our opponent has one of those few repeatable removal spells that they can keep getting back with Feather's ability, like Reckless Rage, but of course this is a singleton format, so it's not super likely that they have one of those. This hand is not terrible, but might be short on lands to play Marinar. although maybe this is the type of matchup where just playing a Rat Colony every turn is good enough. So, yeah, close call. I think I'll take a Mulligan here. And this is a little bit better. Arcane Signet can help me double spell on turn 3 and then maybe play Maronar on 4. So just need a third lane and I guess a fourth one eventually. Mox Amber. Okay, there's my land, so for now, Rat Colony, next turn, Signet Rat Colony. Mind Stone, that's fine. So now the big question, does our opponent have something like Reckless Rage to go with Feather, because I don't think we're beating it. All right, just a young Pyromancer for now. That's acceptable. Get in for eight. And if they can't answer Marinar, the game's gonna be over very quickly. If they do have an answer, I can still Witch's Cottage to put it back, so we don't have to pay the commander tax. Gutter Snipe. Okay, three cards in hand, three mana. Probably gonna see some non-creature spells now. And a Lightning Axe. Okay, at least they had to discard a Conqueror's Death. So that will temporarily save them. And I'll keep Marinar in our graveyard. Ooh, the Shinobi's interesting, but I don't think we're gonna ninjutsu anything. So we'll put Marinar back. And then play some creatures out. And yeah, hopefully Marinar can help us deal lethal next turn. Just gotta dodge another instant speed removal spell. And at 18 we're not at risk of dying. Electrostatic Bolt their own Feather, just to trigger Gutter Snipe and Pyromancer. Luckily only deals 2 damage, so not enough to kill Marinar. Can kill a Rat Colony. But I don't think that's gonna be enough. Arcanists also not quite enough here. With Haste, getting back Lightning Axe would have been good. So opponent gets back their Bolts. And we just need to play our commander and turn our rat sideways. And that should do it. I guess they get a redraw with Mindstone, so game's not over just yet. Can they deal 3 damage at instant speed? If they can, this is going to be painful. All right, just a bolt on the rat, which still leaves us with 15 damage unblocked. 
So yeah, ended up being a pretty close game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Davriel, so a discard deck. And my hand's not bad, since Herald Sworn, if we can get it down, will provide us with a steady stream of card advantage. Kind Sail can take away Herald Sworn, unfortunately, so there goes our game plan. And our opponent's playing black, so the fear on Meronor not quite as impactful as we would like it to be. So might see Davriel come down here. And I think I want to hang on to my lands to eventually play my commander. Alright, Thirst on Mimic at least delays Davriel by a turn. And this turn I get to double spell with Thoughtseize and Rat Colony at least. Take a Fell Spectre, which would have been quite good. Alright, so Davriel makes me discard Rat Colony. Hive is also going to be important here. And just want to keep hitting our land drops against the discard deck. Okay, Hagra Mauling. Could kill Freebooter to get my horn back. Um, Don't really want to attack into the Vermin right now. So... Tough call. Could also play this tapped to then next turn guarantee 5 mana for Gnar or activating Hive. Depends whether our opponent will draw another discard effect next turn, which could punish the line off trying to kill Freebooter and get my Herald's Horn back. But I guess we'll give it a shot. So I'll pass. Discard a Rat Colony to Davriel. And kill the Freebooter end of turn to resolve my Herald Sworn. I guess Field of Ruin deals with Hive as well, so that plan's not gonna work. Take one. Just in case our opponent has a discard spell that we're gonna hang on to. They have something like Inquisition of Kozilek. Ooh, nice. The Shinobi to make me discard two. Luckily, I've got the instant speed removal here. So we get to keep Harold's horn and we answer the Shinobi. And now I can play horn and another rat. So that worked out. And then now do I want to trade while the vermin doesn't have anything to make me discard? I guess having an extra rat means more tokens with Gnar in the future, so maybe I should wait. But yeah, the fear here is not going to prevent the vermin from blocking. Sorin, okay. Another planeswalker is powerful. And our life total will start dwindling soon with Davriel's passive as well. At least they're empty-handed, they don't seem to have any removal, so maybe Maronar can take over. Can really want to land now. Another rat instead. Okay, so if I play Maronar... I guess I'll have to discard a rat colony, that's fine. Sure. And then next turn we can hope to make some tokens. Poon finds Liliana's Triumph. Can sacrifice a rat. And Castle Lockthwain's not bad either. So they can sacrifice Davriel, make me discard the rat they know about, or they can keep it for the two damage each turn. And we're just gonna unload as many rats as possible next turn to make some tokens. And swarm our opponent to death. Vermin attacking to make me discard, I'll take the one. Alright, opponent decides to make me discard. And I guess I could even replay Davriel here to empty out my hand completely. 
Fair enough. I don't think you'll be needing that. All, All right, rat is great. Pay. And another rat, excellent. And I should probably activate this now before the opponent can play instant speed removal in response. And no attacks just yet. Keep making more rat tokens next turn. But yeah, we have to be careful at 13, taking 5 per turn here between Davriel and the Flyers. But we might be able to take out our Planeswalkers next turn. Graveyard Exile, so wouldn't be having any fun with the uh, reanimation spell. And a Spider Queen, wow, what a great draw. Can make two spiders, so... Yeah, things are getting pretty tough. Harold Sworn's been kind to us so far. We're at nine. And just to land the draw. But I can activate Hive at least. So point's got four blockers. Can activate Hive. And then... I want to try and kill Spider Queen and Davriel. Those are the most threatening right now. So let's say... I send Hive and Rat Colony at Davriel, meaning they would have to block with three creatures to save him. And then I can send three tokens at Spider Queen. Meaning they would have to once again block with three, although this time the Freebooter is a slightly better blocker, but I can just sacrifice the token that's blocked by the Freebooter. And then the last rat colony, I guess I could send at Sorin. But it's probably gonna be traded off as well. Alright, this seems fine. And then exile Fell Spectre, sure. Okay, so I want to use Maronar before damage, so I get more rats. And uh, might as well sacrifice the rat colony over here. Spider Queen will die, Davriel will die. And I'm happy trading for the menacing spiders. Okay, so as the dust settles, we're at 9, and our ever-increasing army of rats will hopefully take over now. Opponent gives us a good game. Ooh, tiny bones. Yeah, they can activate that. And that's an instant win. Well, that was a lucky top deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing the redeemed, so green-white tokens, which are problematic in the sense that they could trade off for Rat Colony, until, of course, Marinara gives them fear. So, this hand seems fine. We've got our banner to eventually provide card advantage as well. Just need to hit our land drops. And some Mind Stone or Adeline. Both are powerful. Probably want to take... Mindstone to slow down their game plan of ramping out Rostani and Tender Shoot. Cabal Stronghold's a nice pickup as well. Doesn't really help ramp into Marinar, but will eventually make it easier to deploy the extra cards we draw from Banner. Our opponent's actually offering the trade here, which is interesting. Yeah, I think uh, I'm fine taking it. So 
So Adlin's gonna deal a lot of damage here, but hopefully we'll eventually overpower them. Okay, so double rat colony. And hope they don't have like a race the alarm type card. And now one rat colony might be able to trade off for Adlin. And uh, Marinar is going to be lethal here too. 15 unblocked damage, so yeah, very clean game here, showing off the power of the rats, even against a decent start from the tokens deck. On to the next one. Up against the Zareth San, and since this is in their command zone, they cannot actually use the 4-man ability, so unlikely to be a rogue tribal deck, more likely to be more of a blue-black control deck with lots of counter spells and instant speed removal. I would like to keep Rebirth to save my creatures from removal, but I also need the lands to get up to 3 eventually. I think I played Tats. Turn 2 Mimic on Rats. And then turn 3 maybe Herald Sworn. while they cannot counter it. And then the Effigy will be a nice source of card advantage as well. Swamp on top. And uh, could already play Marinar, but probably not into three open mana. So instead, kick things off with the Rat Colony. See if they have a response. Might have wanted to play Frexian Tower first, actually. So if they killed Metallic Mimic, I could sacrifice it, still play Marinar. So, probably fine to attack, even though they could have some rogue flash creature here to block. Opponent takes two. And probably go for Effigy now. Over Marinar. And this will probably get answered. Right, so at least we're on the board. And we've got our Herald Sword still providing a nice stream of card advantage. Now a Sweeper could still be concerning. Still think I'm good to attack. So do I want to commit another Rat Colony to the board? Do I want to play Marinar? That is a question. Think I'll go for Marinar here. And if they counter this, that's fine. Makes it less likely that there's a Sweeper incoming, which is what we want to avoid. Their opponent's got 5 mana, so this is the turn where they might flash in Zareth. But if we can play enough for rat colonies, then uh, we might put our opponent in a tough spot. So yeah, now our rat colonies are large enough where our opponent is forced to block one of them with Zareth if we attack. So now if they were to flash in Zareth, it's a must block on the Rat Colony. And yeah, looks like that got the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Nikia of the Old Ways, so creature heavy deck. And yeah, my hand's okay. Crippling Fear should come in handy, maybe sweep up some mana creatures. 
and then Rebirth can potentially protect Maronar. Although if our opponent plays Nikia, we don't have to worry too much about creature removal. So don't want to play the Effigy if we're planning to cast Crippling Fear. Opponents out of lands in hand. Probably fine to play Rebirth Tapped to guarantee Crippling Fear next turn. And no attacks for now. There's Nikia. So I'm happy for opponent keeps Nikia. And then the question now is do I want to Crippling Fear? Or do I want to double Rat Colony setting up a very deadly Maronar next turn? That might be better. As so I'll be attacking with four six powered rats. So I guess one point shy of lethal. But again, with Nikia in play, opponent can't cast non creature spells. So we're relatively safe here. Any chance Rada can pose a problem next turn? Don't think so. Their opponent's at 1. We're at 22. I have to imagine we can survive unless their opponent floops out a Crater Hoof Behemoth here. Not just Rada. Going up to 7. And uh, let's see here 6, 11, plus 8. Should be safe to take it. And then our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Toski, Bear of Secrets, and my hands are right. Should be a reasonable matchup if we can dodge some fight spells, which the Dread Few can maybe take away. Okay, opponent's got to one two drop we can take, and their hand's pretty slow. Although Blast Stone could be problematic if they can blow up all our two drops. The rest not going to be able to take that away. So for now just another Rat Colony and attack. And then what's the earliest they can blow a blast zone. I guess they can put a counter on it this turn and blow it up next turn. So I might not want to commit any more two drops to the board. Although then we're also not progressing our own game plan. Might as well start with the duress. Take away guardian project. So if I don't play another two drop our opponent doesn't really have a reason to blow up blast zone. If I play another 2-drop, then their turn is going to be activate Blast Zone, which also takes away a land, so it's going to be a while for them to get going again. And then I want to probably hang on to Piper to rebuild the board. I think that's fine. If I just attack for 6, then opponent could just play Toski, which also blocks my rat for a turn, and I'm not confident that we're necessarily that far ahead, whereas now I know what I'm getting into and I can rebuild without having to worry about blast soon. So there's Toski. My rat has menace and now fear as well. And we can start making rat tokens soon. So I don't hate my position, assuming Maronor survives. Forerunner for Trample, that doesn't matter. And let's get this party started. Play a rat, make a rat. And... Uh, sacrifice a rat to make more rats. So we can hit for 7. And next turn we should have lethal. And 
and Renata is not going to change that. Alright, sweet. Could even activate the Piper's second ability here to start stealing the opponent's creatures. Also a nice combo with Maronar. So yeah, we got to see our mono black rat tribal deck in action. And the conclusion is that for the most part you could just build a deck that's 60 rat colonies, 40 lands and a Maronar, and you would get most of the effectiveness of this deck. So if you're looking for a budget deck, don't let some of the rares hold you back. You can easily get there just with rat colony. But of course, adding those additional three drops and discard spells makes a deck a little bit more resilient against strategies that could otherwise wipe away your board easily or have some other answers to your commander and just adds a little bit of spice to the deck and the gameplay, making it more interesting to play for a long time. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.